welcome everybody. My name is Deb Royals Mazurk, and I am super excited to be here with you today for this premiere broadcast from what could become St. Francis TV. So welcome to St. Francis Television. Um, before we get started, I wanted everyone out there to understand and know that we're being very safe. We have a, a divider between us so that we're still practicing uh, CDC COVID safe guidelines while we're doing these interviews. And I have two special guests today. The first guest up is going to be Monsignor Michael Clay, our new, our new pastor here at St. Francis. We are so happy that he is here with us. And to get us started, I'd like to turn to Monsignor Clay and say, how's it going? What's it like living with us folks here at St. Francis? Well, it's uh, another day in paradise. Every day is just another day in paradise. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> not the way I expected that my first few months in the parish would be like when I was uh, a year ago uh, factoring in the, 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 the notion that I would be coming back to the diocese in the summer of 2020. Uh, in the summer of 2019, I was in the full throttle of teaching and directing doctoral dissertations and managing admissions and things of that nature and thinking, okay, when I get back to the parish, I'll just kind of launch the way I've always have, always have. Uh, surprise, <laughs> it didn't quite work out that way. So uh, yeah, there were uh, some, there have been some unexpected uh, twists and turns, but I've learned in life, you just go with the flow and everything is grace and it's all good and somehow we get through all this. And this is, you know, as a person of faith, I'm, I'm a great believer that somehow the Lord's got a hand on this in some way and I'm just enjoying the ride, just enjoying <laughs> the ride, yes. Uh, I firmly believe that God's timing is perfect and um, you being here with us could not be more perfect for this time. Um, there's a a really exciting new vision that you're bringing to our entire parish to know, to believe, and to live. Um, some of us call it KBL for short. And it really is delving into who we are as Christian Catholics. And I'd like, I'd like for you to share a little more about why this program is so important, how it will help us shape ourselves here at St. Francis and um, the ways in which it will help us go deeper into our faiths. Our faith. It's a great question and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak a little bit about what we're doing and more importantly why we're doing it. So um, this is uh, my fourth time to be a pastor. I've just come back from eight years of teaching at a university working primarily during the academic year with undergraduate students and graduate level seminarian students who are preparing to become priests. And it's been a fascinating journey in that what I've learned from working with these young people is that just because you're a Catholic by virtue of your baptism doesn't necessarily translate into, I really have a pretty deep awareness of what it means to be a Catholic. I'm a Catholic because I was raised a Catholic. I'm a Catholic because my parents were Catholic. I'm a Catholic because I have to be one in order to be a Catholic priest. And so it's just, there's kind of this cultural mindset that I've discovered increasingly is at play for more and more Catholics. What I've learned is that it's important that we drill down a little deeper and understand the why. Uh, why am I a Catholic? What difference does it make? Uh, why am I here? Uh, who is this Jesus and what difference does he really make in my life? These are questions that I have found very uh, engaging for young people uh, who are on a pathway of discovering what's my purpose in life and who's going to love me. Those two foundational questions that everybody needs to get an answer to. So what I've been working on has been a, uh, an ongoing project of how do we help Catholics in general appreciate at a deeper level who they are as Catholic Christians. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I brought that with me. 
thinking, okay, I'm not sure when I'll ever get to use this again, having done it at a university, but what I discovered when I got here was, wow, there's a natural opportunity here for a community as wonderful as St. Francis to go even deeper with their faith. And so um, I've just been in conversation with a number of people like yourself and others on our staff and with the pastoral council, and we've been debating ideas back and forth about how we could actually pull this off. And what really strikes me and really excites me is that the, uh, the left-hand blessing <laughs> of COVID-19 is that we've become a lot better at technology. Mm -hmm. We've learned how to use it to educate, to form, mm -hmm. to communicate. And so it occurs to me this would be a phenomenal opportunity to take what we're learning from this shift into a more technologically based form of education and use this for evangelization, for ongoing formation, etc. So, uh, so I've developed this four-part series. It's going to be a video lecture series that will run for about, about 12 months altogether when it's said and done, when it's all said and done. And the uh, series is going to be uh, unfolding in these ways. So we're going to look first at what is foundational to being a Christian? What is, a, what is Christianity 101 all about? Mm -hmm. And what I've discovered over a couple decades now is that a lot of Catholics have some kind of an intuitive sense of that Christianity 101, but they don't conscientiously think about it. They don't consider how does this impact my day-to-day -day life. And so uh, I, I think this would be a great opportunity for us to kind of get the uh, shakedown cruise on the, the 101 of Christianity and, and for us all to kind of check in and see how, how I rate myself in terms of all these points. So we're going to do the, this first part in two different ways. We're going to do a, a, like a little mini tour during the Lenten season. It'll be a, about a one hour video presentation on the 101 of Christianity. I'm hopeful that a lot of people will, will tune into that and you know, if for no other reason, Lent's, Lent's a penitential season so you can at least suffer through it for an hour <laughs> and you'll, you'll get a soul out of purgatory in the process. So you know, that might be a good, at least the benefit of you know, the soul in purgatory will be happy for that. But who knows, maybe some others will find it's like, wow, this is really insightful, or I had never really thought about it that way, or perhaps in a few cases, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So that's my hope is that this one hour clip will give you a taste of a much bigger piece that will then follow. Between May and September, we're gonna run the elements of this Christianity 101, which has 10 components to it. We're gonna run a, a, a more in-depth video series on each of the 10 points. It'll be about 20, 25 minutes in length. There'll be an opportunity for some uh, discussion prompts to be put in there so that if you want to join in a small group here in the parish and have some conversation around the points that are being made, you could actually do that in real time mm -hmm. because again, with the, the ability of technology, you can see a video and pause the button, mm -hmm. hit the pause button, have a conversation around a question, hit the un unpause it and move on to the next part. There you go. And so two in May, two in June, two in July, two in August, two in September. Uh, we should mostly be able to get through that bent on our crazy schedules. Even in COVID-19 times, we all have crazy schedules. And to be able to get acquainted with these two, these 10 fundamental elements of our Christian faith. Once we complete that, phase two will step in. And phase two is going to look at the question of so what difference does your baptism make? Really, what difference does it make? Again, I find that because Catholics are baptized in infancy, a lot of us don't give a lot of thought. Uh, we don't ponder that very often about, so what does it mean for me to be a Catholic? What does it mean for me to be a baptized person? So in October and November, we're gonna run a series of four video clips, again, two a month, for people to explore what their baptism means. And then uh, we'll take a break in December because December is a crazy month. And then in January of next year, we're going to run the next part of it, which ties into a project that's already been launched in the parish, but that we need to come back to and pick up because it's essential for everything else. And that is, how have you been equipped by the Holy Spirit to be a Christian, to live your Christian faith out? 
And every one of us has been equipped with that, with charisms. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit gives us charism. When you are confirmed, you're given a whole, a whole group of charisms uh, that are yours to unfold and discover. So we'll take January and February of next year to unpack what that means, mm -hmm. to learn what that means. And then when we get to Lent of next year, we're gonna take some time looking at what does it mean for me to live all of this out very concretely? What does it mean for me to be a disciple? What does that really mean? What does it mean for me to be a missionary, which by the way, all of us are called to be. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna necessarily go to India or the end of the world. You might be a missionary to your own family, mm -hmm. to people that you love deeply. Uh, but how does it mean for you to be a, a, a missionary? And then to pick up Pope Francis's language, he wants us to also think very intentionally about what does it mean to be a missionary disciple. And so that will be the four-part series that we're going to run for the next 12 months. Once we run through that series, for those who would like to continue on, we're already in discussions about how we're going to plan out ongoing adult formation opportunities. Again, we'll use technology because it's available to us. Mm -hmm. So there will be opportunities for people to do perhaps a one or two or a three part series on some topic of Catholic theology. We're also thinking very seriously that for those who would like to really go deep, really deep and understand more uh, extensively what, we're, what we learn as adult Catholics, adult Christians, there'll be an opportunity for you to actually do some intensive training that we will get experts who are college professors, uh, who are theologians, who are biblical scholars, who will actually be engaged by the parish to teach modules to those who really wanna plumb those depths at a, at a deeper level. So I'm excited about mm -hmm. this. I think it's a lot of good potential. I think it's a great opportunity for our parish and if there's no other reason for me to be here, I think this is a great reason to be here. <laughs> I love God's perfect timing. And one of the things that, that I took away from the uh, 50 minute or so uh, short that kind of overviews the whole project uh, is God is not mad at us. He's mad about us. And forming this relationship with, with God is, is just an amazing opportunity for our entire parish to begin to think that way. So often as Catholics, I think we think, oh, I've done something wrong. Um, and I don't think that's what God's after mm -hmm. at all. And I love that that has been a very strong part of the, um, the presentation that you've put together, just reinforcing how much God loves us and is waiting to have that concrete relationship with us. I've always been amazed that um, when we look at these 10 points of Christianity 101, the first point and the grounding point is the truth that God is love and God loves us more than we can ever imagine on this side of eternity. If you don't get that, the rest of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you get that, and I think it's essential that we do, it opens up a, a window into a world that quite frankly, we can't even begin to imagine. Amen. And when Amen. we can begin to imagine it because we know it's true, we experience it as true, it's transformative of our life. Mm -hmm. And I've just discovered over and over again through retreat programs, particularly with uh, teenagers, uh, college students, young adults, a lot of the, uh, you know, these retreat experiences that we offer to our younger people, that they come away from those experiences awakened to the fact that I, I am profoundly, deeply, irrevocably, never can end loved. Mm. And God, God thinks I'm, to use an old, old fashioned expression, I'm the cat's meow. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm better than sliced bread. Uh, and they, people, when, when you get that, when that light bulb goes on, it's just amazing what happens. So that's the grounding. So yes, God is not mad at you. God is mad about you yeah. every day, every time. 
And now I'm really happy to introduce you to our second guest today, and that is Jim Wall, who is the director of uh, music and liturgy here at St. Francis. Jim and his team have done amazing things to, to bring Christ to people during the pandemic. And I'm curious, Jim, what's it like making that happen for people in ways that we never dreamed that we would have to? I've got to imagine there's been moments of grace and struggle and magic and God's miracle, all of that. So what's that been like? Yeah, in, in a word, it's been surreal. <laughs> um, you know, I, I joke with people that, um, you know, when, when you're getting your, your degree in liturgy or, or music, you know, there was not a course called, you know, music ministry in the time of pandemic. And you know what I mean? No. So this is all, although I'm sure there will be now. Um, you know, this, so this is all kind of making things up from scratch. And it's been kind of amazing, though, watching um, the body of Christ come together um, to do that. And even people like Dogenes, who's behind the camera right now, yourself, different people from our staff that have really just, just crossed over working with each other um, to make sure it happens. And yet, while there is such beauty to it, and um, it's also apparent that it's the sense of loss. There's a sense of exile, if you will. And I think as we go into Lent, that almost becomes even more apparent um, because it's the sense that we're meant to be together. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and yet, in a, on, a, on a certain level, we can't be right now. So, you know, the camera will never replace that. Mm -mm. And yet, how do you continue in this time of exile, if you want to put it that way? continue to be the body of Christ for each other. Um, so there's moments of grace, there's moments of beauty, but all at the same time, there's this sense of, of loss that, that pervades it. But I think that, you know, that's where our faith, the dying and rising of Christ, really just comes to the central point. Wow, I can't even uh, imagine for folks that haven't laid, haven't stepped into the church at yeah, all, yeah. how much they, they rely on what we bring uh, to feel connected, and I love this idea as we again move into Lent, because it's been, it'll be a year in March, it, as we move into Lent to the sense of being ex in exile, but also knowing on the other side of all of this is the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, or Christ, um, if we turn to our faith. Right. Um, so on the subject, of Lent. It's right around the corner. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and in is. our <laughs> effort to still make sure that, right. you know, we give you an experience to, to feel close to God, to, to travel through Lent in a way that is profound and still layered and rich and deep. What's on the... What's on the agenda? Yeah. Well, you know, even before I actually brought, I brought a prop, Deb. Oh, yay. We and love props. I don't props. know if this, will, if this will carry over okay there. But this is, a, of course, a beautiful calendar. This is our liturgical year. You can see it. Yeah. And, um, and the thing about the liturgical year is I love this calendar because it's a circle. You know, we're used to these kind of square, linear calendars that, um, you know, that just you mark off a day as you go around. Except with the liturgical calendar, it's a, not only a circle, it's kind of a spiral. Mm. Because as we, move, as we move in, we're moving toward the central event of, of Christ. Um, and I think it's a great reminder that even though we've been in a pandemic, we've still, this whole last year, and you saw that, it, you know, the pandemic started in Lent of last year, and, you know, Lent, of course, is this purple, it's hard to see sideways, but is this purple section right here, and we go, so we've gone through this whole year in the past, and yet we're called to still grow closer to Christ. So it's not like this year has been wasted, and so I think seeing that again, that down, um, allows us to remember that, that even during the time of the pandemic, that, that we're still drawing closer to Christ. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do with, with our programming for Lent. Um, of course, the Stations of the Cross, um, particularly in a Franciscan church, are such an important part of our tradition. And we will do them again this year, but um, with the investment we've made a little bit in technology, uh, we'll actually have ministers in the church processing through the Stations of the Cross and then we'll, we'll air them virtually for people to participate in. So it's such an important part. Um, we're going to continue to do evening prayer on Wednesday nights in the church, and we're going to lift it up. 
uh, make it a little more solemn, a little more uh, inclusive. That's a great way to continue to, to pray that way. Um, there's, there's events that are just being hosted throughout different ministries of our parish. I know Trevor Thompson with, mm -hmm. with Peace and Justice Ministry is doing a, a great program called a Greener Lent. Um, mm -hmm. which is allowing, um, you, I think you've worked a little bit with that, haven't you? Yeah, which is allowing us to explore the idea of fasting a little bit. I think it's fasting, fasting from meat for, for Lent and how that um, helps not only us spiritually, but it helps us you know, nutritionally, but also it helps the world ecologically. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, Faith Formation with Jen Fiducia, they're, they're putting on a lot of different programming, including a, a walk through the St. John's Bible, which is this beautiful... Mm. Bible for my uh, alma mater, St. John's, um, <laughs> uh, which is a, one of the only illuminated Bibles since the, the time of the printing press. So um, I also resuming a lunch break, which is something I do with the kids. So that will be once Thank a week you. on Fridays at noon. Um, and that's a, a way for, for children and their families to kind of enter into the Lenten message as well. Um, because it's all about, as much as Lent is about our own you know, our own conversion, if you will. It's only that that conversion happens within the community. Right. Um, and so we, we follow, even most importantly, is we follow the catechumens, those who are going to be baptized at the Easter vigil. Um, of, of all the reasons that we have Lent, that's one of the primary reasons, is that we continue to walk with them. And so you'll, you'll be seeing that in our Lent programming as well. So uh, look forward to the, uh, I think Diogenes is going to be working on the, the, the big you know, spread, if you will, of all of our Lenten activities. Um, but really our goal is just to continue to draw closer to Christ as a body um, and as, as each of us individually, and then more importantly, as the body of Christ. Um, and all of that information we're going to be making available to folks. Um, I just want to say... And this is for everybody here at St. Francis, uh, but particularly to you right now, since you're here with me, that folks are so grateful. Um, there are, people have really struggled with the isolation aspect of COVID, and so I think that uh, all the different things that Liturgy and Music has done so beautifully um, has made people not feel quite as isolated. Thank you. So we are greatly appreciative of all of that. So all of this and more we're going to be making available to folks as it uh, as we draw closer so that you can keep up with all of the activities that are taking place throughout Lent. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>